Okay, everyone, we're back for the co free comic book day live broadcast from Steve Rude Center. I am Steve Rude, and <clears throat> this is the final broadcast of the day. We're going to be doing one final drawing of, uh, that we're picking out of <clears throat> the drawing bucket here. We have some new names to add <clears throat> to our list here. Uh, <clears throat> John uh, Dropchuck, Eric Doyle. Uh, Steve Robness, uh, James Leeds, uh, Dale Schmidt, Allison Wu, Mike Cole, David Lieb, and Mark Nelson. So <clears throat> this goes to show that we keep on top of things here at Rube Central here. <clears throat> Everything is updated in a timely manner. So <clears throat> we have one more drawing that we're going to be doing today live. And I believe, um, being the guy of uh, always in search of variety that I am, I think we're going to do a classic pen and ink drawing, <clears throat> and I just got done drawing <clears throat> this uh, this girl's head right here, which I'm going to be translated into a ancient pen and ink technique, Chinese secret, secret no doubt, of <clears throat> uh, pen and ink turn of the century rendering, which is very commonly depicted by Charles Dana Gibson, James Flagg, and other people from that era. So <clears throat> there's my underdrawing that I just got done completing. And here's the photo reference that I'm working from. <clears throat> so in a minute there, in a minute here, we're gonna <clears throat> step up, grab our, our ink pen and brush, and do a rendering that hopefully you guys will find interesting here. Uh, <clears throat> to mention here, once again, we have a Kickstarter coming up. This Kickstarter is gonna be devoted to the last five years of uh, commissions, sketchbook drawings, things like that, that you've seen from previous year's sketchbooks. This is the cover for it, and uh, uh, this is something that we're going to be funding through Kickstarter. Um, the thing commonly used today to raise money for independent projects like the one that we're trying to do here. So this is going to be the 2020 Steve Root Sketchbook. We haven't published one since 2015, so we have a lot of years to make up for. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm always showing you guys art before we start off in our, in our, uh, our drawings of the day. I thought I would show you the original art for uh, the coming of Gormando. This this book is going to be a uh, a 200 page oversized artist edition. Now it's not going to start off like that. We're going to Dark Horse, the publisher, is going to be doing the comic book version of it first, the small version, in three issues, and then we're going to this giant oversized artist edition, which is going to be 11 by 17. So it's going to be big. Anyway, this is the original art for the cover that I did. I'm going to preview it here for the first time. <clears throat> you can see how large I work. This is approximately 20 by 30 inches right here on, uh, on Crescent Illustration Board. <clears throat> and that is the actual cover that I did for this book right here, The Coming of Cormaggio. All new Nexus material that people have been waiting um, a good four years to finally see. So this is the book to look out for that we're going to be um, premiering this summer. Again, me and Mike Barron are going to be back in action doing the character that we uh, <clears throat> that we began in 1981 and are still doing to this day. We're just having, we're just having a blast. <clears throat> so let's close this up and let's get on to uh, <clears throat> the actual art piece that we're going to be doing today. Flo Hardy is standing by once again to do the drawing of uh, <clears throat> from the bucket. <clears throat> now the people who are going to be winning this, this pending drawing from me. So the tools we're going to grab here are, first of all, this pen nib right here. I think this pen nib actually goes back to the 1900s. <clears throat> and uh, so let's see what we can do with translating this, uh, this color drawing right here uh, to pen and ink. So we just moved into your animation board. You can see this is a style of of, uh, of rendering here that is um, that is very vintage looking. Let's switch pen nibs here because this one just isn't working right here. Who says old is the best? <clears throat> this is a brand new one right here. This is a Hunt 108, and it's a very flexible nib. So let's just do our best here to uh, 
to emulate this turn of the century style right here, which I think is just the coolest thing. I've actually been working on this style for for 35 years, <clears throat> and it's uh, it's anything but easy. So if you really want to try something that's going to test your ability as an artist, uh, this is something I would recommend. Uh, Montgomery Flagg, the uh, the guy that did the I Want You poster from World War One, <clears throat> was one of the greatest of these of these practitioners from this this form of rendering right here. Someone said. Can you try Corto Maltese Steve Root Edition? Uh, Corto's Maltese, I think, is a is a uh, either a French or a Spanish work that I I'm not too familiar with here. So if you want to see my my version of that character, uh, that would probably have to come in the form of a of a paid um, commission. So if you're interested in things like that, uh, just contact Janelli at. Uh, at the Steve Rude Central offices here in sunny downtown Phoenix, <clears throat> and I'll see what I can do for you, okay? This pen nib is working a lot easier, so I'm very, very glad to hear that. Someone said, really cool that you use traditional tools and medium over the computer <clears throat> generated stuff. <clears throat> well, again, that's that's my generation. My generation is, is not of the of the, um, of the current uh, uh, persuasion or uh, machines are, in, are very much involved. Um, that's not just not the time that I grew up, and I, I love my traditional tools. That's that's what uh, uh, what keeps me fresh and invigorated. Is always trying to outdo myself uh, with the things that <clears throat> I grew up with. I uh, grew up using. So these ink these ink strokes here are simulating um, pencil strokes or or uh, tones of paint. Very difficult. Anyone who thinks this is easy ought to try it. So I've been working on trying to get this down for a long time, decades now, and it still it still proves to be. Uh, something that tests every inch of my abilities here. What comic book made you fall in love with comics? Um, the question was, what comic book made me fall in love with comics? Um, that's, uh, that's a question I've gotten uh, variations of several times today. Um, the comic books that really got me into the field were um, the Marvel comics of, of the 1960s. <clears throat> and that would have been almost anything by either Jack Kirby or John Romita uh, when he was doing the Spider-Man books in the mid-60s <clears throat> after taking over for, uh, for Steve Ditko and Spider-Man. But anything Kirby did is, uh, is just the best to me. you got to pay close attention to what you're doing here <clears throat> when you're doing something like this, this star right here. Because it can get really messed up um, uh, quickly if you're not paying attention to um, either the direction of the strokes <clears throat> or uh, or just the um, the values you're you're producing uh, with a pen with a pen nib. Let's see what else can I add to this right here. Some light light strokes here. We have a visitor to the dude household today. His name is Steve Ringberg. Um, he's a local writer of novels and comics that came by to visit today. What in the name of... <clears throat> I think we have a worthless dick here invading this space here. That we are attempting, attempting to make good of here. Those worthless dicks. <clears throat> These pen names, I tell you. <clears throat> so much of it has to do with, um, I don't know what you're doing, Dick, but your days are numbered here. <clears throat> more 
delicate rendering coming up here. I think that Dick is trying to crash the party here, which is typical of Dick's. They just can't get enough attention here. Uh, what's your problem here, smoker? She wants Corona. Uh, you can take a hike, uh, a hike, Dick. If you want to get rid of a Dick, just tell him to take a hike. That always works. How many different artistic mediums are you fluent in? Um, as many as I am languages, no. Uh, I, I, tr I train myself to use pretty much every medium there is. The only thing I, <clears throat> I don't, I'm not really big on is, uh, is sculpting. <clears throat> but anything that has to do with uh, art and paint and, and paper, um, either through my schooling, my independent study, or whatever, <clears throat> uh, I've been working on things like that my whole life. And that's part of the fun of being an artist is picking and choosing um, <clears throat> the mediums that you want to that you want to explore. That's part of the fun. Uh, may I help you? <clears throat> she wants her Corona. Uh, is there something I may help you with, Dick? Well, most of you know that I call cats and dicks. Uh, dicks being good for nothing. For drawing, do you prefer a pencil or a mechanical pencil, Steve? <clears throat> um, the question was about my preference on uh, um, <clears throat> pencils, if I use a mechanical one. On occasion, I use a mechanical one. I used one for a long, long time on my comic book work. <clears throat> but honestly, um, uh, I just switch back and forth all the time. I never quite know what I'm going to be... Um, going to be doing. And that's another um, nice prerogative of being an artist. You can you can just go back and forth on, on anything you want and and, um, and do the pick and choose thing. <clears throat> now I think this is where um, <clears throat> the brush is finally going to come in. I'm going to be doing some large black areas. Someone said, what was your favorite Kirby Fantastic Four run? Fuck, he's going on your chair. Um, I think the dick is hungry here. <laughs> and there's no question that when a dick is hungry, they let you know about it. <clears throat> um, again, if I, when I'm put in the spot and, and, and ask what my favorite FF issue is, I don't really have one. Um, <clears throat> there, there's so much magic within all the issues that, that Kirby did. Um, picking one would be... Um, would be hard. <clears throat> Honestly, I would just pick any of them <clears throat> and decide which one you, you think is best <clears throat> and go from there. Let's grab our brush right here. This is a, this is a little Cornell number 10. <clears throat> and yes, you can someone see. said, will you use a brush <clears throat> after the pen? <clears throat> I sure will, <clears throat> but I'm going to be smart enough to let the pen nib dry here first. <clears throat> to do it so this is going to be our last drawing of the day and um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing a drawing as uh, as you all know I'm big on uh, as to the winner the winner is going to be for for um, uh, who we're going to give this drawing away from we've, we've been doing this drawing for throughout the day on free comic book day and um, <clears throat> this is part of the fun that we're doing here uh, <clears throat> as we're all basically uh, either not working, not going to work, or stuck inside. Now, I have a stuck inside job every day of my life, so um, there's no problem in, in the root household here. here. <clears throat> but for those of you who are going crazy, uh, um, this thing will be over eventually here. What do you think about modern coloring technology in comics? Well, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad about it. it um, <clears throat> the good part about modern day comic books is that you can do anything with computers. And I do happen to like the way computer coloring looks in comics. It looks uh, stunning. 
uh, as far as the people who are practitioners of it, um, I have I have less less good to say about that. <clears throat> These people seem to um, think that computers are a free reign to go crazy and do anything you want <clears throat> uh, with uh, with um, overdoing things, <clears throat> and I think that's kind of uh, the wrong approach to take. If you want to. Uh, look at what I think to be the best color we've ever done in comic books, <clears throat> or in this case, comic strips. <clears throat> you just feel free to go back to the 1930s and the 40s with the the comic uh, with a Prince Valiant comic strip by uh, Harold Foster. If you want to see what I consider to be the best coloring that's never been matched since that time, <clears throat> there's uh, there's my answer. Chris Kammer said, The dude, so great to see you, my friend, sending love from Madtown. Oh, that's great. I have a, I have a dear friend from back home named Chris Kammer, and uh, he's just the greatest guy. Um, Chris actually made his living as a dentist, but the thing that we both had in common was our mutual love for Alice Cooper. And Chris was lucky enough to meet Alice. I'm still working on that. If you guys have read my latest newsletters, <clears throat> then you know that I've been on a mission to meet Alice for a long, long time. It's never come about, and yet the, gil the guy lives right here in Phoenix where I live. But I guess I'm just not meeting the, the right connection here. But uh, let's, let's, hope, let's hope for the future, because I really want to meet Alice before um, and neither of us are no, are no longer here. Chris, great to hear from you. You're such a good guy. The same person who asked about your favorite Kirby Fantastic Four run also asked about how about Storyline? Storyline, Stan always did a good job in the FF. Uh, him and Jack were just uh, an indomitable um, team <clears throat> that went together so well. I'm going to add some things right here that I think are going to be artistically uh, uh, fun to look at. This is going to represent, I think, water. Someone said, what kind of music do you listen to? Um, guy wants to know what kind of music I listen to while I work. Um, <clears throat> I'll find I listen to books on tape. Uh, <clears throat> those, are a, those are a blast. And as, I, as I, I've often pointed out, this is where artists have the advantage over writers. Because <clears throat> when you're writing, you can't exactly have somebody talking to you when you're trying to, trying to write. Artists can have anybody talking to them while they work. And... Uh, being the multitaskers that we are, um, it's no problem <clears throat> to uh, to do both at the same time. So, very lucky. I'm glad to be an artist or <laughs> a writer. You love the old school art. Are you inspired by Scorchy Smith and other from the early years of comic strips? Um, uh, my, my, uh, my leanings are always toward the adventure strips, <clears throat> which is one of the reasons why... Uh, uh, that I'm involved in doing, uh, that Baron and I are involved in doing Nexus as a comic strip right now, uh, rather than just the comic book that Nexus has been known for for the last 35 years. So it's a way of kind of bringing something new into something that's been around for a while <clears throat> and uh, kind of inject some, something new um, into, uh, uh, in this case, a book that's been around for several decades now. So there's my little stylizations right there. Someone said, I met Alice Cooper in 88. Uh-huh. Lucky you. Yeah, there's always somebody that met him. Um, I'm just hoping eventually it'll be me someday. I have a lot to thank Alice for. He's just uh, um, someone who uh, really knew how to talk to youth which I was at one time. Very Alex Raymond-like. Guy thinks it looks like Alex Raymond. Well, thank you very much. We all know how great Alex Raymond was. <clears throat> so I think this is going to be a wrap-up for this one right here. I think the last thing I'm going to do is, uh, <clears throat> is add something to the ear here, if I can do it without... <clears throat> smearing my hand in the ink, which is um, something that I do regularly here. 
uh, sound effects courtesy of uh, my friend Steve Ringenberg in the background here. <clears throat> oh, am I being noisy? Oh, not at all. <clears throat> so there you go. Let's sign it. <clears throat> it is so great to hear from Chris Cameron. What a what a great friend he was. <clears throat> the good old days in Madison. Okay. <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's be smart. Let's get about a dusting of air here. <laughs> All right, Dick, what are you doing down there? You worthless animal. <clears throat> Fortunately, um, the ink from a brush dries much faster. Um, If we can get it to work again here. Thanks again for all the live stuff today. Been fun and informative. Chris Cameron said, Dude, I miss you. We tried to meet Alice. We did meet Renfo? Renfield, yeah. Renfield was Alice's. Uh, this is my friend Chris Cameron commenting again from Madison, Wisconsin, where I grew up. We did meet Renfield, and that was Alice's agent at the time. Boy, these pen nibs, they just don't want to work. Is it hot in Arizona now, or is it still decent weather? It is beginning to get hot in Arizona. Like 100 degrees. We had 100 degrees the other day, and um, that's going to be guaranteed to be the summer temperature for the duration here. So, on behalf of this final broadcast, uh, um, we're going to have the worthless dick here do the drawing since Flow Hard is not around right now. Diana said, I second that comment. Very inspiring to watch you, Steve, to watch you, Steve as always. Well, thank you. That's my friend Diana Lito writing in. Diana is a freelance artist from the comic book and advertising field. And, and uh, um, she's also somebody that, that uh, does great commissions for people. Chris Kammer said, you made the greatest <coughs> card for Alice when his father did, died. That was really special. Yeah, that was, I remember that, yeah. <clears throat> That's half the reason I didn't get a chance to meet Alice at the time, because his dad just passed away on the night we were supposed to meet him at the Madison Coliseum. Someone <clears throat> said, of Alex Toth, what is your favorite design? Uh, my favorite Alex Toth design are the ones he did back in the cartoon shows from the uh, 1960s, the Hanna-Barbera years. <clears throat> There you go. <clears throat> and so we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna do a drawing here for the drawing. Uh, Dick, are you available right here? The Chinese Dick. Uh, apparently, we have the Chinese Dick right down here that is more than willing to uh, help out with this drawing. Now, Dicks are strange creatures. They're not like blowhards. Dick, you want to do the drawing here? Yeah, just grab the Dick. <clears throat> This is a Chinese dick, and these dicks are especially um, hyperactive here and temperamental. Dick? Oh, here comes Chloe. Oh, flow hard. You're just in time. Flow hard, come on over here and do the drawing again, okay? <clears throat> you see this drawing Daddy just did of the pen and ink of the pretty girl? You like pretty girls. You're a girl yourself. Can you pick one out of there, Chloe? <laughs> All right, Daddy's going to pick one for you, okay? <clears throat> The winner is going to be, out of, out of the, the bucket here, the bucket list, is David Lieb. So, David, you're the lucky winner of this pen and ink drawing by Seaver the Dude on free comic book day. <clears throat> Before I sign off today, remember we have a Kickstarter going on, so your, uh, your donations for that are going to be appreciated. We have the best fans. I know we're going to come through with that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, there was one last thing I wanted to uh, bring up here. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> for all of you, for all of you uh, worried about the virus, this, this, don't forget, it's all in a bottle right here, okay? Nothing to worry about. We're going to get over it. We'll see you in La La Land. This is the dude signing off. Have a free comic book day and have a good time. Miller time. <clears throat>